Fred, where does the Black Panther Party stand concerning the Weathermen, the SDS? We stand way back from the SDS and the Weathermen because we believe that the Weathermen action is two actions. It's REM2 and Weathermen. We think they call them both national action. We think that REM2 is national action, Weathermen is national reaction. You know, We think it is anarchistic, opportunistic, individualistic, it's chauvinistic, it's uh, uh, customistic, and that's the bad part about it. It's customistic in that it's leaders take people into situations where the people can be massacred, and they call that revolution. And it's nothing but child's play. It's folly, and it's criminal because people can be hurt. We say that they're doing exactly what the people Pigs want them to do. When they take people down and, and just do nothing, play around, and the pigs are prepared for this, and they'll wipe all of those young people out. We think these people may be sincere, but they're misguided, they're muddleheads, and they're scatterbrains. The only way we can show them is to criticize them like we're doing right now, and then leave from here and go to the federal bill and have a demonstration that's to educate, a demonstration that it is uh, disciplined and organized. You know, and that's what we're going to have to do, and let them see the examples. Tell me why you feel the approach of the SDS weatherman is wrong. I feel it is wrong, uh, just as I said before. No, don't don't that, tell me just you said before. That's why I asked you again. Just answer straight, just okay. in case we use this part. I feel that is well, wrong. Let me ask you again. Well, why do you feel that the approach of the SDS weatherman is the wrong approach? I feel that it's wrong because it's pig action. You see, they're doing exactly what the pigs want them to do. They're leading people into a situation where the, it's an astronomical situation, too great for the people to deal with. It's a situation where you got a bunch of mechanical pigs with 357 magnums and shotguns and mechanical mates and all that type of thing. And then they're talking about they're going to carry on a revolutionary struggle. That's not revolution, it's insanity, it's, it's a madness, it's nostalgia, and it's a massacre. That's what a potential massacre, that's what it is. And we don't support that because we've said all power to the people. All the power is manifested in the people. We don't have any people whose lives we believe that should be thrown away. Has the Weatherman SDS tried to get you to go on their side? Have you met with them and what happened? We met with the, the Weatherman faction of SDS uh, several times. We've had ideological struggles and we have ideological differences. So what we did was we had an, uh, we, we, the other faction of SDS that agreed with the Black Panther Party called for an alternate action, a well-disciplined uh, action not to provoke pigs, an action not to talk about uh, setting up confrontations with the pigs because the people are not ready for confrontation. These confrontations that they have are premature. They're politically premature and they're wrong because they commit people in a situation which they're not anywhere prepared for. Well, why do you think the Weatherman SDS tried to link the Black Panther Party to its movement? I don't know if it was actually the Weatherman of SDS. I'd have to say that it was the establishment press that is nothing but a tool of Warden Nixon's uh, machine. We call him Warden Nixon because the whole world is a penitentiary and he's just a warden of the whole world. And you see, these people are just an arm that he uses for fascist oppression, you know. And I think today these fascist uh, news media might have did that. Now, briefly, how would you sum up what the Weatherman SDS is trying to do and what you think of what they're trying to do? I'd say that basically they believe that, they believe that white people need to learn how to struggle, that they believe that these white workers need to learn how to struggle through confrontations. I'd have to say that basically I believe that this is incorrect. I believe that white workers have been struggling. They're some of the most violent people in the world. I believe that what they need is they need a redirection in their ideology and in their politics. They need to know who to struggle against. The workers need to start to begin to learn that their job is to struggle against the bosses. And until they do this, then struggle is incorrect. It's like no struggle at all. We say that if you don't struggle correctly, you shouldn't struggle. But you should struggle. We said dare to struggle and you dare to win. Dare not to struggle and you don't deserve to win. But we have to struggle properly. What about the special approach of uh, Weatherman, which seems to be violence. Well, you see, it's, I don't think it's really violence, you know what I mean? I think it's just a lot of folly, it's a lot of child's play. I think that to have violence, you've got to be able to cope with violence, you know what I mean? And that's what the Black Panther, see, the Black Panther Party, a lot of people say we're violent. We're, we're a self-defense organization that believes that the people should be educated to what's going on. We, yes, we do defend our offices and we do defend our homes. This is a constitutional right everybody has, there's nothing funny about that. The only reason they get mad at the Black Panther Party when they do it is for the simple reason that we're political and they don't want to admit this. There are a lot of young organizations around, but we are a political organization. We're an organization that understands that politics is nothing but war without bloodshed and war is nothing but politics with bloodshed. That it's just like you stretch something and it goes, you can stretch things, they're going to be in another thing. If you stretch politics so long, it'll be war. And that's where we're at.
Well, then why do you feel it's so important for the Black Panther Party to disavow any real link with the weathermen, STS? I think it's important because there are a lot of people that watch the Black Panther Party, for example. They observe us and participate with us. And if we can be connected up with this, then it would be very uh, uh, unadvantageous to the people and very unadvantageous to the struggle in that people that claim to be revolutionary would be going down roads that they think might be revolution, but in fact they're not roads of revolution. They'll be going east when their intentions are going west. And also it's important because the chairman Bobby Seale is in town and he's being tried by this fascist judge Adolf Hitler Hoffman, you know, and he's being tried without a lawyer. And we've got to bring all of the attention and focus on this trial that we possibly can so that people can understand that these people are more capable of building gas chambers than Hitler ever was capable of building gas chambers. And we're going to have to get together. We're going to have to have some anti-gas chamber marches and some anti-fascism marches and some anti-Hitler Hoffman marches and some anti- Mussolini, Attorney General Mitchell marches, and some anti uh, daily and some anti hammerhead, hammerhead marches. These are the things we're going to have to do. The people need to be educated. If they're educated, we can resist and we can stop this fascism. Okay. All right. right. Thanks for giving okay. us the okay. shot. Okay. Good. Okay. Good. Okay. Thanks. All right. Fred, the uh, weatherman branch of the SDS uh, seems to be giving the impression that the Black pa Panther Party is, is with them. No, the Black Panther Party is not with weathermen. Let me explain very clear, clearly that we believe that action like that is action of insanity. It's not a revolution even. You see, going out in the streets and getting people shot and killed and maimed, that's insanity. It's chauvinistic and it's customistic. And when we say customistic, we mean it's, it's a type of uh, action on the part of a leadership that would lead people into the same thing that custom led them in. We believe that all action around that weatherman faction is going to turn out to be the little bighorn. And we're not getting involved in any little bighorns in the city of Chicago. The Black Panther Party intends to support anything that is disciplined, anything that does not provoke violence on the part of the pig power structure, because this is what they want to do. They want to kill some people. And these leaders are nothing but leaders who have customistic tendencies. They will lead people into slaughters. And we think that that's uh, it's criminal to the people. It's a crime against the people. Cut it for a minute. That's real good. Now I want to put it just one other way. I'm going to ask you, why don't you... Fred, why doesn't the Black Panther Party support the tactics of the Weatherman SDS? We don't support those tactics because they are uh, acts of provocation and they're acts that the pigs, the, the policemen in the city, enjoy. They're doing just what the police want them to do. Our actions are just the opposite from that. We are educating the people to the wrongs that the pigs commit to the fascists around the country, and I think that's the proper way to do the thing. Has the uh, weatherman tried to uh, curry favor with the uh, Black Panthers? Right. We've had several discussions with uh, the weathermen. And we've tried to talk them out of a lot of the anarchistic uh, demonstrations that they have planned here. We tell them that we don't believe in demonstration for the sake of demonstration. We believe in demonstration for the sake of education, and we still go on that basic theory. We believe that people need to be educated if we're ever going to defend ourselves against the fascism that's running rampant in the United States of America and all over the world today. How violent do you think the weathermen are looking to become? I don't, uh, I don't think it's really a question of violence. Uh, I think it's a, it's a, it's a, we call it muddleheadness, you know what I mean? I think how muddlehead will they become is the question. How uh, masochistic and anarchistic will they become, you know what I mean? How much will they enjoy seeing people slaughtered in the streets before they get, get, uh, come around and get them a plan of well-disciplined, well-organized type of education demonstration where the people can be saved. We say all power to the people and all power is manifested in the people. We don't have any people to just throw away and throw their lives away. We think that people that throw the people's lives away in these types of counter-revolutionary folly, those people are criminals and they should be judged as such. And these people that commit crimes against the people, the people should try them and indict them and sentence them. Uh, tell me, Fred, because the Black Panther Party feels this way and because the Panthers have been linked with weathermen through the weathermen, uh, have you tried in any way to dissuade the weathermen uh, to stop them from uh, this kind of tactic? We've talked to weathermen time and time again, you know what I mean, and told them that we thought this was wrong. And let me say this, I don't believe these people are, I think they're some sincere people, but I think they're a little mixed up. That's why I be very careful about the word I use. 
I try to use words like muddle-headed, you know what I mean, and uh, scatterbrains, that's what they are. There's some young people who really have some revolutionary fervor, but they don't know how to direct that fervor. So what we're going to have to do is try to reach out that into some type of revolutionary discipline. I, don't, I think if anybody looks at us, we're an example. We try to set examples for the people. The Black Panther Party is the most disciplined organization in the, in the country, and the pigs still attack the Black Panther Party office, so that shows that we're still doing something to the power structure, but we don't have to do it in a way where we put people's lives on the line. That's not necessary, and we try to tell them that. Okay, uh, tell me what else you want to get off your chest. Anything? I'd like to tell you, know, there's one thing that's very important to the people, that they see that that so-called trial at the federal building is nothing but what I call a hecatomb. It's a public sacrifice where they're slaughtering the leaders of the people, and the only way we're going to stop that is if the people resist that, you know what I mean, because it's not a question of non-violence or violence, it's a question of resistance to fascism, a non-existent, non-existence, and this is what we have to deal with, we have to go down to the, fa to the federal building and deal with that judge, we call him Judge Adolf uh, Hitler Hoffman, and, and uh, deal with the Attorney General, uh, Attorney General Mussolini Mitchell. All these people that have these fascist tendencies, they, they have this society is more technical than the German society ever was. They are going to be a better and more adequate gas chambers, and we've got to be prepared to deal with that. Education is the only way. We've okay. got to educate the people. You got anything else you want to say? No, not, not particularly. Okay. All right. Look, I uh, just want to do some... Uh... December 4th, 1969, Fred Hampton and Mark Clark were killed in a police raid targeting the Black Panther Party. We don't see any chance of any violence. Oh, he was brilliant. Black Panther Party this time is a political self-defense. You know, he'll come up with incorporating some music, you know, with his speech. Someday we'll be together, Diana Ross and the Supremes. About him uh, doing the speech about brothers and sisters that have been killed, that have dedicated their life to freedom and liberation. He did it uh, in the People's Church, did that speech, and people just went, ah, oh, it was amazing. Akua and Jerry says it doesn't really feel like 50 years, but what happened on December 4th, 1969 is seared in her memory. Then known as Deborah Johnson, she was pregnant, sleeping next to Fred Hampton, the chairman of the Illinois Black Panther Party. He was 21 years old. It took a long time for me to be able to go all the way through from beginning to end narrating what happened. Mattress is just going, you can feel bullets going into it. I just need to dead everybody in there. With help from an FBI informant, Chicago police raided the apartment on the city's west side, killing Hampton and Mark Clark and injuring several others. Cook County State's Attorney Edward Hanrahan called it a shootout, but the Panthers called it a shoot-in. Blood uh, behind the door. Those officers fired 99 shots. Federal grand jury concludes that only one possible shot could have come from a Panther weapon. The account that we gave of the event is the truth. Hanrahan is a madman. The police officer who did that assassination then walked away from it and said to other people, Bobby Rush is next. If they had laid eyes on me, I would not be sitting here right now. I have no doubt. Former Panther leader, now longtime Congressman Bobby Rush, believes divine intervention is the only reason why he wasn't in the apartment that night. Police left the scene unsecured, and in the days following, thousands of people filed through to see the remaining evidence for themselves. The FBI was hell-bent on destroying the Black Panther Party. Expecting police action, the Black Panthers had fortified their office. FBI informant O'Neill was now head of Panther security in Chicago. And I remember uh, walking out of the office and uh, and looking through a little clearing over on the, ne the next block, which was right in front of uh, the Monroe Street address, and seeing a lot of <clears throat> police cars over there. And um, at that time, Bobby Rush came to the office. Uh, he had just come from over there, or maybe the coroner's office. In any case, we walked back over there and... Uh, we both were speechless. We just walked through the house and and saw where what had taken place and where he died, and it was it was shocking. And then I was, you know, I just began to realize that the information that I had supplied leading up to that moment 
had facilitated that raid. I knew that indirectly uh, I had contributed, and I felt it, and I felt bad about it. And then I got mad. You know, I had... Uh, and then I had to conceal those feelings, which made it worse. I couldn't... I couldn't say anything. I just had to continue to play the role. FBI headquarters authorized payment of a $300 bonus to informant William O'Neill for, quote, uniquely valuable services which he rendered over the past several months, unquote. Panthers started in 1966 in Oakland, California, demanding freedom for black people. They organized legal armed patrols to challenge police brutality. And chapters spread across the country, establishing survival programs like health clinics and free breakfast for children. Being a member of the Black Panther Party is a way of life. Many people died for this struggle, and it's a struggle that endures to this day. This is Fred Hampton. John Preston and Jack Hart helped with the Black Panther exhibit on display at the West Side Center for Justice. The FBI labeled the party a black nationalist hate group, using its counterintelligence program, Pro, to try to disrupt the organization from within. And tensions were erupting between Panthers and police. Two Chicago officers and a Black Panther died in a gun battle weeks before Hampton was killed. One of the things that Fred said that whether you live to be 19 or whether you live to be 99, if you haven't made a commitment, you haven't lived at all. I mean, I think one of the reasons they moved on Fred Hampton so quickly was because he was pushing this idea of a rainbow coalition. See, that's very dangerous uh, if you're trying to keep people apart. Uh, you don't want them to get together. No one was convicted in the case. The families and survivors received a $1.8 million settlement. For many, though, Hampton's legacy is unsettled. An effort to name an honorary street after him failed under pressure from the police union, citing his anti-police rhetoric. They can do anything they want to to us. But those who knew Hampton say his life and death reshaped Chicago politics. If he had not sacrificed his life, then there would not have been a Harold Washington. There would not have been a Barack Obama. And this is 50 years later, and he still had an impact the Black Panther Party. And if I ever get doubt, I see all the efforts to distort, to malign, to make it look like what it wasn't. I say, we must have did our job. At the time, I was eight and a half, nine months pregnant. Born just weeks after the deadly raid, and my birth certificate came close to being my death certificate. Fred Hampton Jr. is also getting ready to turn 50, and he's working to raise money to save the house in suburban Maywood where the father he never met grew up. With the politics, there's no expiration date on it. It's, you know, some things that the Black Panther Party addressed back in the 1960s, they're still relevant now. It's a time that we not only talk about the assassinations, but the contributions, the impact, and the need for us to continue to work. Send me a fig one feet. No me and a rat, but me I go there for the cheese. So that the pummel back, and you know them off for eat. So don't test me, me kill your blood please. Yeah, hear me? Me send me a fig one feet. No me and a rat, but me I go there for the cheese. So that the pummel back, and you know them off for eat. So don't test me, me kill your blood clean. From the gully, get the use I come up from the gully. No tech talk on the streets, them we study. I count up the cash, tell me if you're not worried. I pre a different part, and I chat it in a hurry. From the gully. Get the use I come up from the gully Don't take that by the streets, let me study I count up the cash, tell me if you're not worried I pray a different part and I try it in a hurry it started that first Christmas, ain't really get shit I asked for My wish list was filling type down, so bro she said